drag them all. JT, Jeff Tech. Um, so this one, let me see. So three five, number three oh five, right? Oh Shaisa, where is it? Three five. Yes, what? Which one? Oh, you didn't get one? Okay. Uh, so this one says, oh, this one's kind of neat. All right, uh, let's see. All right. This is about John leaving his house in Irvine. to a meeting in Los Angeles, 45 miles away. He somehow arrived within an hour and a half, it's kind of pretty. He arrived at the meeting at 9.50. At 3.30, he left the meeting at your home, he arrived home at the bar. Right, so both ways, it's 45 miles, right? So the first thing is, what was his average speed from Irvine to Los Angeles? Oh, poor little dude. Didn't even look over there. You guys want to be able to see what's going on? All right. Um, anybody playing at home? There you go. All right. So, so how do I figure out speed? How fast I'm going? How do I figure out the, how fast I'm going? Yeah, well, what's the formula? Let's start with that. Distance equals? Right, good old dirt. So if I solve for R, what do I do? Solve for R. Divide by t. And this should be completely make sense, because give me a speed you could be driving. 55. 55 mile an hour, look at you. You're like, I don't even want a cop to give me a ticket right now. <laughs> Somebody, I am a cop. I got an 80? No, I um, 55 what? Miles, Miles per, per hour. hour. Look, distance per time. So, OK, equation makes complete sense. It matches up with the units. It has to. So, I need to know what things from Irvine to Los Angeles is how far? 45. 45, at least the route he took. And then I just have to know how long it took him. And we know what I want it to be in. What units does it need to be in? Not minutes, because would you say, oh, how fast are we going? This many miles a minute? Like, who the hell are you? Hours. Hours, yeah. right? So if he goes from 8.35 until 9.50, that's an hour and how many minutes? One hour and 15 minutes, right? How are we doing? Is everybody all right? So from Irvine to Los Angeles, 45 miles. So I know the distance is 45. And I know the time is an hour and 15 minutes now, we can say this better. 15 minutes is how much of an hour? We know this. Say again? A quarter. A quarter. We know that. This is 1.25 hours. Yes? Yeah. And then, so now you just have to throw 45 and 1.25 so you can see the miles per hour. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Okay. You guys creep me out. You're looking at me, but it's like you're not really here. It's freaking me out. You guys are alright? What's up? Everybody alright? No, 
I'll play weekends. Mm -hmm. like, Stop asking. Does that make sense? Is that all right? I mean, so part B is the same thing. It's just the other way around. So you got to get to take those times to figure out how many hours. Is that cool? Part C, what's the total time spent? And, and you can, that that's straight up, right? Just how long did it take in the morning? How long did it take in the afternoon? And add those together. That's the total time. Yeah, how are you going to put it together? Say one. How are you going to put it together? How what do you mean? Long? How much time in the afternoon did he drive? 3.30 until? 5.18. What's 3.30 to 5.18? How much time is that? An hour. Watch how I do it. An hour would be 4.30, right? How much until I get to 5 o'clock? 30 minutes, right? Is that all right? And then I need an extra. So it's an hour and 48 minutes. Yes? 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 All right, and then how do I make that into pure hours? 48 minutes is 48 out of how many minutes to make an hour? 48 out of 60, so it's one and 48 sixtieths. And you can just throw the old calculator if you want to, right? It should come out to be 1.8. We doing okay? What's up, how we doing, we're okay? Are you good? <laughs> All right. So part C just says, what's the total amount of time? Well, it was an hour and 15 in the morning, and it's an hour and 48 in the afternoon. Then add those things together, right? Okay. And then part D just says, use the total distance divided by the total time. So that's the overall average speed for his round trip. So that should be hopefully enough to get started on that. Is that all right? Who asked the question? Is that enough to get started? Okay. All right. I don't know if you guys saw the video of the the guy was in his car with his girlfriend, I think, and he said, 80 mile an hour, if you drive an hour, how far have you gone? And she just did not believe it was 80 miles. And, you know, that always makes a math teacher so happy. See that? Anyway, sorry. All right. If you haven't seen the video, maybe you spent your life more productively than watching YouTube. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. All right, all right. Anything else from homework? Anything else from homework stuff? Okay. All right. I feel bad for you guys. You guys look sad, especially because I'm the one making you feel that way. It's almost getting through my math teacher exterior, making me feel bad. Almost. All right. Um, so we got one last section to talk about before uh, the test. Uh, we got enough time, good. So let's see what you guys know already about this topic. And actually, let me start off like this. Um, what's the main difference between a uh, handicap ramp and you know stairs, obviously? One is just a ramp. The slope, yeah, so so slope, so here's a door, yay, Jeff, okay. and you got stairs, or you got a ramp, right? So the main thing about a ramp is, I want to be able to go up, but over a longer stretch, which should make the slope, and the slope in mathematics is the exact same thing as it is in real life. So if I was climbing a mountain that went like this, that's high slope. That's it's a big ass slope. You guys kind of with me? It's not a technical term. So let's say that this door is uh, five feet up. Yes. Yes. And let's say that this goes uh, two feet, but this goes ten feet. So this, if I take the ramp, I go up five feet for every 10 feet Ten. that I go over. Is that cool? So that's exactly what the slope is. It's the rise, you guys maybe should know this, over the run. run. So how much do I rise versus how much do I run? 
So what's the slope? Okay, thanks, Ralph. <laughs> Your math boy, do it. All right. So what's the slope of this guy? What's the slope of the stairs? Five. Yeah, up five feet in two feet. Yes. So that's like 2.5, right? Which one of those is bigger? 2.5. Yeah, so it's got a bigger slope, which makes sense because the whole purpose of a ramp is to try to like make the slope less, right? So that if you're in a wheelchair, it's easier to get up there. This would be insane. In fact, have, it, has it, have any of you guys seen this uh, sign on the road somewhere? Yes. 7% grade. And maybe next to it or a little further down, you see runaway truck ramp. So I lived in Florida and Virginia. It gets a little more hilly, but still. And then I finally took a big ass road trip and I went to Colorado and stuff. And I saw my first runaway truck ramp and I was like, holy shit. Because <laughs> I didn't realize that's a thing. Because I never lived around mountains. Uh, what the hell is 7% grade? Well, what's 7% as a fraction? Percent means per 100. So that would mean that the road either rises or falls, depending on which way the truck is going, seven feet for every 100 foot. That's a 7% grade. And a 7% grade is, is a pretty decent slope, to be honest. You guys with me? You guys ever, you've seen that. Did you ever understand what the hell it meant? Like, if you make it down this hill, I'm gonna add 7% to your grade. No. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, I've seen, I think the most I've ever seen is 13% grade, which is, you know, insane. Uh, anyway, okay. So let's bring this into mathematics. So the actual idea of slope in math is the exact same thing as it is in real life, which is kind of nice. So if I had a graph like this, let me give us some points to work with. Say I have a point, I sometimes have a point, uh, let's just say I have a point here and a point there. And I want to know what that slope is. All right, so slope is rise over run. So I could start, it doesn't, now watch this, we're going to do it both ways. If I start at this point, do I rise to get to the next point? No. I actually fall how much? Three. 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 So that's why it would be negative three. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I fall, that's negative rise. How much do I run? Positive. Positive. So the slope of that line is negative one slope. So it makes sense as a negative slope, right? If this is my profit in a company, oh shit. Negative slope, we're going down. All right, you guys kind of with me? Not at all, okay. Are we okay, were we okay here? So the idea of slope, to make it more mathematical, we have an idea of, you know, is that a big slope or a small slope in real life? What would the slope of the floor be if everything was good? Zero. It would be zero, right? It doesn't rise at all, you would hope. If it does rise, something's wrong. You with me? Mm -hmm. So the idea of slope should be how much does it go up and down divided by how much does it run? Because if it doesn't go up and down at all, that'd be zero over whatever, that's zero. Does that make you guys with me? All right, okay. So. If I had two points, I just have to see how far apart they are up and down, divided by how far apart they are left and right. That's exactly what I, I indicated that for us on this picture, but now I can see it from two points. So what's this distance here? Three. 
And what's this distance here? Three. Now the difference is, the one little thing is, that doesn't rise, that falls. So that would be negative three, and then it runs over three. Okay, that's, that's it. Now what if I would have looked at it the other way? What if I start here? Then I would rise three, wouldn't I? So I'd rise three, and I'd run. Now what do I do here? Minus three. Yeah, the run is backwards. And what's three Minus divided by negative three? It's still negative one. Yes? So when it says graph the line with, like, number four on the graph distance? All right. <laughs> I told you to put that away. All right. Do you graph those? Oh, we're not there yet. I know. I'm just, oh. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that what you're explaining? This is using slope to do stuff. I'm right now just explaining what slope is. So we're almost to this problem. We're not quite there yet. So that's why you're looking at me like that. <laughs> you can't do this problem based on what I've said. Okay. Maybe you could, but it's still a step ahead. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, so there's got to be a better way to do this. I should not have to graph the points to always figure out the slope. So can somebody tell me, what's the y piece of this point? Well, actually, just tell me, what's this point? Four. Zero, zero four. four. Zero four. Kick ass. And what's that point? Three. 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 One. Yes. Right? So how do I get that this is three because it's the difference in the what pieces? Two right. plus three. I love you guys. Stop, stop, stop. What axis is this? Y, y axis. So the rise or fall is due to the difference in the y's. Now watch how that rhymes. Rise, y's. Right? So how different were the y values? Three. That's why that was three. Is that cool? So we're trying to develop a formula for slope. Before we get any further, anybody remember what the letter is for slope? What the variable is, the letter? M. And they think it's because the French word for walk is marche. And slope is like walking. And of course, it's like related to march. Do you have to know French for this class? No, right? So slope, which is M, is rise over run. And now we see the rise is the difference in the two y values. And the run is going to be the difference in the x values. I mean, is that cool? Do you guys see that? That's how I can tell how far this is, is just how different are the x values. Isn't that going to tell me how far that is? Same thing with this. How different are the y values? So in general, if I have two points, I don't care where they are. Let me call this one x1, y1. And this one x2, y2. Do you see why I might want to use those? I don't want to call them both x, y, because then if I say x, y, what the hell one am I talking about? So that's the first point, x1, y1, and that's the second point, x2, y2. So what would the rise be? It would be how different are the y values? Y1. And then how different are the x values? So watch, you guys help me out. How different is this? How much is this? Wouldn't that be the difference in the y values? Right, what's this? This is y1. What's this one? This is y2, right? And then this is x2 and this is X1. Is that, is that cool? That might look a little bit freaky, but I'm just taking the pieces, right? So how far am I going here, for example? X2 minus X1, right? And the same thing for the Y's. Now, the thing is, one reason we subscript these is because you have to subtract the same direction or else you're going to have the wrong sign. Okay. That's the only reason we have the subscripts in there, to be honest. Okay, so let's see this thing in action. So if I give you a graph, just 
count rise and run. You don't have to use the algebraic method, but you can if you want to, it still works. If I don't give you a graph, don't graph. So if I said find the slope, you need a D in there, there you go, buddy, uh, between a negative one and four and five. What, Jeff? Oh, no, man, I keep having to make this shit up. Okay. So now, now let's see. Let's see if you guys can do this. What goes on the top? What is it in English? Rise. What, what rhymes with that? Wise. So it's always Y on top. Sure. Okay. Negative two minus four. You see that? The difference in the Y's. You chose to go this minus this, which is beautiful. So you better go this minus this on the bottom. That's all those mean is you better go the same way on each one or else your slope is going to be the wrong side. We don't have minus, minus five. Say again, sorry? Minus four. Y equals minus. Is it where? What? Five. Five. Minus. Yeah, again, please understand, that is just to see how long that is. So I have to use subtraction to see how different those are. They tell me how long that is. Because the slope is all about how much did you go up and down, how much did you go left and right. So that being minuses in the equation makes sense. The thing that some of you guys got to get over is, see how here I put two negatives? Because there's a minus in the equation and there's a minus on the number. So they both have to be there, right? Because what happens minus a negative? Yeah, so what do I get? I get negative six over six. Negative six over six, which is negative, negative one. one. What's a zero? Stop. Not adding, it's dividing. Yeah. And then that would be? That's the slope. That's it. So if I graph these, if I graph these, what's one thing you can tell me? If, I, if somebody graphed those and they got a picture like that, what can you immediately tell them is wrong? You can do it, you can do it. What kind of slope is this? Is it negative or positive, this slope? It's positive and it's supposed to be negative. So you wouldn't even have to look at any other shit. You go, ain't no way you're right. It's supposed to be a negative slope. That's supposed to be an unhappy company. Stock's going down, right? Is that cool? Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, let's see. So, finally catching up to your question. Slope is neat. It tells me, now I want you to realize this. Slope tells me which way to go. And a point tells me where to start. So if I wanted to be on a trail, you have to tell me where the trail starts and then which way to go. And then I can go down the trail. Does that make sense? So to get a line, I just really need one point and then a direction to go from there. And then I got the line. So for example, if I knew that the slope of a line was uh, one third, and I knew that it went through the point, what Jeff? Another thing I gotta make, just do it dude. There you go buddy. All right, gotta get myself <laughs> through it. The thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the trailhead. I'm gonna plot the point. I don't know if you got anybody hikes. Maybe that's the wrong analogy. I gotta plot the point, because that's where I start. Negative one, four, where's that sucker go? Yeah, so negative one, four. And then what do I wanna do from there? It's, I guess you would be going down, right? Because that's what you're going to No, 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 what's happening? Look at this point, look at the slope. Yeah, up one. And then write three. One, two, three. You guys with me? No, yes? Yes. Give yourself a place to start, and then the slope tells you where the hell to go from there. So like the slope. The slope is like, I'll always get you back to the trail if you start on the trail, right? I know I have a lot of hiking analogies in this, but... Now watch this. This is neat. Algebraically, are these two things different? What's negative one divided by negative three? What would the negatives do? It would cancel. So aren't these equal? Yes. Mathematically? 
But what does this tell me to do slope wise? It tells me to go down one, back three. Do you see how I'm still on the same line? Yes. So that's why the negatives in a fraction, they don't change the number, but they do change how I apply the slope. But it still takes me to the same damn line, right? Okay. So yes? When it's a negative 5 over 3, whatever, which one is negative then? I love it. That's so awesome. It's like you're in my brain, which kind of freaks me out, but it's all right. <laughs> so let's do that one. Let's do another one. So if I add it's a slope, we'll do like you said, negative 5 thirds, right? Yeah. So the way I've written it is the 5. Okay. But it could also be, those are the same thing, aren't they? Yeah. So let's try. So let's say I'm going through the points. What you got you? One, two. Let me know. All right. Negative five thirds. What was it? Shit. Why well, have to make it that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Negative one, negative, negative one, negative two. I don't know. All right. So what's the first thing I do? One, two. One, two. So one, two. That's where I start. Now, if I look at it the way it is right here, where am I going to go from that point? Down. Down. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Don't put a point here, right? I see people do that. It freaks me out. Over three. One, two, three. If I look at it this way, I would go up five. One, two, three, four, five. And then back three. Right? One, two, three. So roughly the same line. My scale's crappy. Do you guys see that? So it's sort of like if I can get from my house to my friend's house, I need to be able to get back. And that's what the negative moving around stuff is. Does it helps you go back the other way? Yes. Um, you said before if you found the point, you can go backwards and find the point. I mean, well, that's what I just did, yeah. right? I went back. Even if you even if you did uh, didn't have that up there, you could still find the point. Flipping the sign. Yes. Yeah. 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 I like it. So that pretty much. Uh, on the practice test is like number six, uh, part B, one B, I'm sorry. Uh, number four, yeah. Okay. I put all the word problems on the back. Yeah. Oops. By the way, there probably won't be that many word problems on the test, so don't freak out. The test is on Tuesday, so I will have the answer key for this practice test Monday. I think that's enough. Yes? Is that all right? Is that enough? Yes, it is.